Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a creative, I guess, tutorial video. I don't usually do, th do these type of videos, but I have been experimenting a lot, like crazy amounts, with villagers over the past few hours. And I thought I'd share a design for a trading hall and a god machine, so a selector and profession maker thing for villagers that uh, works fine in 1.14.2 and hopefully also 1.14.3. Personally, I've been holding off with villagers because of the bugs and stuff that's been in the game so far but it looks to be at a point now where we can finally play around with them before we get into the actual trading hall design which i have over there and i show you how to build the selector and the trading hall i quickly want to run over a few of the whys so why do we have to change the trading hall from 113 why is it important well villagers changed and i i you, Everybody knows. I mean, look at look at them. They, they've even changed the look of them. Villagers changed a lot in the village and pillage update, the 114 update. And the main thing is that they now require a workstation to set their profession. And this, of course, has its pros and its cons. The, the pro is that we are now allowed to make a super cool god machine where we can basically make sure that the first trade of the village villager is really, really beneficial. And specifically, this is a great thing for farmers farmers and librarians because we can pretty much be selective and select the first book that we get so we can yeah we can we can get a mending villager super easy the second big change is the fact that they require the workstation to restock their trades and that's where it starts to get a little bit complicated and that's why i've been spending numerous hours on this and trying to figure out the best way of doing this now in 114.2 there is something to be said about pathfinding to these pois and this this is something that may change slightly in the next updates, uh, but hopefully it doesn't change so that it would break this design. If it does, please do let me know that down below in the comments so I can make another video and adjustments. So because the villager now needs to be able to pathfind to their workstation, we need to do some modifications to our trading hall and how we previously built them, or at least how I previously built them. And one of the massive changes or one of the massive differences that I will be covering is the fact that villagers, at least to my testing, it's really hard to get a villager. Oops, can I can I can I right-click the villager? It's really hard to get a villager to be sitting in a minecart and reset the trades. I'm saying that it's hard because I did make it work, but I couldn't make it work consistently. Like, and this is something that may change in 1.14.3 because currently there is a bug in the game where villagers will randomly lose their workstation and try and assign another workstation and yeah, it's all very confusing. There is a super technical command that you can run called data get entity and then target the entity, in this case the villager, and this will bring up like a super confusing r bunch of text and uh, I, I, I'm very confused by all of this text, but it has one important thing at the very top and that's the brain memories. So this villager that I'm looking at right now actually doesn't have a workstation according to the data get entry and this is something that I've seen happening a lot and they randomly lose their workstation and I'm not sure how that affects it if we go with this villager instead and run the same command this guy should technically have a workstation but he doesn't he doesn't either have a workstation however this villager does reset his trade so he must in one way have a workstation it's uh, again th this is very 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 confusing anyway what i found out is that we can no longer reliably store uh, villagers in minecarts so the very first thing i needed to solve is to get them out of their minecarts into the trading pens and i know that there are a lot of trading designs that doesn't use minecarts but I really prefer it because villagers are absolutely stupid and it's really hard to work with them and move them around without minecarts. Even if you have like water channels and stuff, there are there are always margins of errors when you don't have them contained in a minecart. So that's, that was the very first thing we needed to change. We needed a system that put them out of their minecart into their trading pen. Now the second thing I discovered, and this again feels a little bit random, but it is that they have a hard time finding their workstation if they are standing right next to it. So in this example, this guy has no space to move in his little cell here. And it makes it so that he resets less frequently than, for example, this guy who has two walking spaces in there. As you can see, this guy resets more frequently and they can do so up to two times per day. So you really want to maximize and make sure that they do it two times per day because otherwise it's going to get 
very inefficient super quickly. The third thing I discovered is that if you cover up the workstation, like in this example, and put a trapdoor on top of it, the villager will not find the workstation at all, and they will never reset their trades, or they will never restock. This was a little bit of a bummer, because this means that it's going to be not so easy to lock the villagers in either, because you don't want to leave a full block space for a villager, because then baby zombies can jump in, and yeah, it can get very bad. So with all of these learnings, I came up with this design here, and this seems to be working rather well. And so to demonstrate, let's trade with this guy and let's lock a few of his trades. Let's lock the paper and maybe the lantern trade. The villagers will only work and assign their professions between 1,000 and 9,000. That's We're going to get to that later. It's super, super important. But it also means that they are checking the day for when they can reset their trades. And it actually says somewhere if... If we hover this thing, villagers restock up to two times per day. This is what we're trying to maximize with this trading hold. We want to make sure that they do it two times a day because we want to buy a, a ton of lanterns for some weird reason. And boom, our villager has reset and we can once again trade with him and everything is working fine just in his little trading pen there. And that is super, super important to this thing. Now, this block here, the flower pot, is actually part of this villager trading hall design. There may be other blocks that you can use, for example, like an end road, etc. that will do the same thing. But the flower pot really works and it is actually super important. Without this block, this, this whole village hall would not work. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you can plant something in it. Put a jungle sapling in that one. It makes it make it a little bit more beautiful. But anyway, it is important because villagers think that they can pathfind into this block. And so essentially, for the villager, they have two spaces here, but they really don't. They, they only have this one block here. And we can always reach the villager and we don't have to deal with them walking back and forth. But they do have two blocks to pathfind to the workstation, which is essentially going to be sitting on this block here, which makes it so that they reset their trades. The second thing I found was that I can't use pressure plates in a trading cell unless they can move. And again, the flower pot comes into play and just fixes that for us because they can't actually move out of this pressure plate. I don't know how visible this is. Let me let me let me grab a stone one instead. There is actually a pressure plate there, an iron one, and the villager cannot move elsewhere. They will always, if this is their workstation, they will always be stuck on this very block here, which is perfect. That's exactly what we need. The pressure plate is there to to make sure that we don't put two villagers into the same uh, pen. So I don't really know how to make tutorials and stuff, but I'm going to build one of these pens and you can follow along if you want to build this design in your own world. It's actually quite simple. The important thing is that you need a little bit of space underneath. You can see the final design there stacked together. That's four of them, but you can see that you need some redstone space underneath. So don't build these at Y level five because yeah, it would be very tricky to fit the redstone that you need. But start with a three by three and then we want to have a pressure plate in the very center block. I use the iron pressure plate just because I think they look the fanciest. I don't think it matters. I think you can use any pressure plate you want. Now, underneath that block, I can actually remove this. Underneath that block, we're going to take the output from the pressure plate. And just to be a little bit fancy, I'm going to use a different block for the redstone. So, yeah, we're going to take the output from the uh, pressure plate. And because in this case, it's a, an iron pressure plate, we actually need to enhance that signal with a repeater. So put a repeater down there. We then want to bring that signal all the way up. And this is essentially what's going to block the villager uh, trading cell so that no other villager can come in. And we're going to do that with a redstone torch there, another one there, and a third one right there. Then we're going to go ahead and put another redstone or another block there and another block there. We're going to take that signal into a repeater and that is all the redstone parts done for, for this design. Our flower pot will go on this block here, and this is actually the front of the trading hall. So at this point in time, you could very well go ahead and just design this and use whatever blocks you want, of course. The new glass texture is absolutely fantastic, by the way. Absolutely fantastic. So once again, the flower pot there is super important. I'm going to go ahead then and place a block there. This block will do a few things. It will, it will transfer this redstone signal, which is important, but it will also make sure that the villager can't move into this block space right over there. He can't jump or anything like that, which is super important. 
Next, we want to put a block here, and now we have our trading pen right there. We then want to grab another pressure or a trapdoor, and I'm gonna use an iron trapdoor here because they look the best, and you can't accidentally open them. And we want to place that on the underneath of the front facing block. So this over here is going to be where we as a player come and trade with the villagers. This is important because now the villager, if they're put in this position, they can't get out of here. They're they're stuck. That's super important because of how the workstations work. We need this spot here to be completely free for our workstation to come in later. Now, as I said earlier, the way I want to move villagers about is to use rails. I'm actually going to punch these out. And the rails are going to come, come right up here. So next to where your repeater is, this is where our rails are going to be. And we're going to use activator rails for this. Activator rails, when powered, will shoot the entity out of the rail and onto the closest full block nearby. And this is actually... A block that or a rail that is a little bit weird to work with simply because the entity will be placed on a solid block if available around it so for example this block here they will be placed on but if there's no block around it there that they can land on they will simply land on the rail which a lot of the time causes a lot of issues so we we need another function now to work around that and once you have your rail placed down like this this is for the next cell this is for the next cell you can stack these as you want just be aware that if you stack them for a long time you need powered rails in between instead of these iron rails and you need to make sure to power them which you can do easiest without interacting with any other things by putting levers on the back side like that. Now, like I said, activated rails are a little bit tricky to work with simply because of how they output the entities. And at this moment in time, they will never put the entity down here. They will actually try and put them on these blocks, which they can't because they're glass. And then they're going to try and put them on the rail and finally probably end up putting them on the rail. It's a little bit weird and I don't really understand them fully. But we need to work around that. So come on top of the redstone dust that you have for your repeater here and place a block just like that. And then in on top of that block, you put another block, sorry, another block and then a, a piston like that and it, this should be a regular piston can be a sticky piston but should be a regular piston it doesn't matter we can then punch that block out or mine that block out we want a redstone dust on top of this block here and then we want a observer facing this way so that the redstone output faces that redstone dust that's going to power the repeater and in front of that observer we're going to put a string string are super cool like they will activate or change block state whenever an entity moves through them and luckily villagers are just tall enough to hit that string which we can barely see when they come traveling in the minecart so essentially if a villager travel in a minecart over this they're going to hit this string which is going to power the piston Next, we need to encase the landing spot. So we're just going to go two blocks up just like this. And essentially what we have now is a working villager unremover put into the trading cell of doom function. The villager should be coming in here, traveling on the minecart. And because this activator rail is powered by the pressure plate being off or no one standing on it, it's going to chuck the villager out. And in this case, it's going to chuck the villager out right here on the rail. And then we're going to push him in. Actually, there's one more part that makes it so that the villager always lands on top of the right rail and that is to use some glass blocks which doesn't suffocate villagers on top of these two rails here so that's really really important because otherwise there are there is a chance for the villager to land on this rail or on this rail over here which we don't want because then then they block the rail and they're just gonna walk around and be stupid so at this moment in time we can actually test this out so this villager here should go into the first closest empty pen which should be this pen that we just built so let's send him off oh <laughs> let's send him off and yep that worked beautifully as you can see he's now in his pen he can't get out and he's now powering that pressure plate which means that this activator rail is no longer active so when the next villager comes nothing will happen when they pass over that activator rail and this allows it for us to stack it just like this so this is the exact same design now i will say this as the villager come traveling through here all of the pistons will fire which is a quite cool effect, to be honest. But because the activator rail is not uh, active, they won't actually push the villager out. So, or the villager won't actually get out of the minecart, and the minecart won't get pushed off the rail. So you're good, even though all the pistons power. The last thing I would recommend doing, and this is not actually necessary, but just for safety so that no zombert or anything else gets in these pens, is to put a trapdoor right over there. This trapdoor will actually be opened by the same power signal that we're using here, the repeater. And so when the villager is not in his cell the trapdoor will be open let's let's kill him 
So I can demonstrate that. There we go, villager dead. And as you can see, the trapdoor opens. So that's it. That is the trading hall. That is how it's going to be looking for you. And as you can see, this is an empty slot with our jungle sapling in there. And we do need to do some adjustments or make some adjustments for when the villager actually arrive. We need to provide them with one of their workstations. But... The system that I built here is our selector, and this is a, in, an important part of this. You can just get away with having a trading center, and then whenever you get a villager, you assign them a workstation. But because the villagers will not necessarily take the one right in front of them, there may be a problem. Like they may, for example, if I have two unemployed villagers here, and I put a and I put a workstation over here, they may very well choose this workstation in instead of the one right in front of them. They are, like I said. They're stupid and we need to accommodate their stupidity. So the villager selector or the god machine is this machine over here. So in this example, you would have your village breeder. Put your villagers down here. And by the way, if you need a village breeder, I'd recommend checking out Nembon MC on YouTube. He has a very cool village breeder that has natural selection and all those sort of things. But you want to build a village breeder and then you want to make sure that your stacked villagers are over here. They're all unemployed. They're all chilling. They're all waiting for us to, to select them. And for those of you who've been watching my Hermitcraft series, you've seen similar things before. The only difference is that now we need a place for us to select their profession. And so I've tried to accommodate that into this god machine. But basically, we order a villager, which is basically just powering a dispenser with minecarts. That villager gets picked up and sent down to our little trading uh, hall thing right here. And I just realized I should have a block right there stupid me uh, so that they are aligned properly so this villager won't be doing anything with us he's like no no i don't, I don't know I, I i hate i hate this i, I want to do this we okay anyway uh, we need to give him a profession and the the most common thing that i'll be doing at least is going to be to give them uh, a librarian profession and try and get a perfect first book trade with the villagers so in this example you place down your uh, lectern or your workstation right here and you may have noticed that lamp just go going off that's actually a perfect perfect demonstration of how this machine works so that lamp just shut off showing us that at the moment this villager is not interested in working well he actually picked this profession but he won't lose it okay it's a little bit weird he won't lose the profession that is because this lamp indicates the work time so if i go ahead and set the time to 2000 he will lose his profession there you go and the lamp will now be on again you see villagers as i said earlier only picks their professions between time 2000 and 9000 and this lamp is essentially hooked up to a daylight sensor that turns on at around 1900 and turns off just after 9000 and it looks just like this and i think this is a very important part of this because without this there's no way of you telling if you're down in your underground base or if you're in an encased house and you have no windows there's no way of telling if it's day or night and because the villagers stop trading when the sun is about there so in the afternoon you gotta be you gotta be a little bit precise about it but anyway now it's daytime, so the light is lit and the villager will be willing to take a new profession. So we can place it on our lectern, we can have a look and decide that this is a garbage first trade. So we break the lectern, place it again, and this game we have Bane of Artman. Do we no, no, that's also really bad. So we keep breaking it until we get a trade that we're happy with. Punch two. I mean, it is a trolley thing to have on a ball. So we're gonna go with this. Now, here's the important thing: you need to lock this villager as a librarian before you do anything else. So I'm gonna go ahead and trade with him. Just one time is fine, that's enough. And now this guy will not lose his profession, despite it being work hours, because we've traded with him once and he has some experience. So he is already ready a librarian and now at this moment in time we can go ahead and push the green button in this case to save him into our villager trading hall and he should now go into that one there yes beautifully i don't know why he took damage that was a little bit weird but it doesn't really matter now the first thing you want to do before you do any other villagers is to come here and put down a workstation for him that corresponds to the profession so in this case he needs a lectern and now this guy is all set. We, we should be able to trade with him. We should be able to lock his trades. And he will reset two times per day. And there we go. Our punch two guy has now reset. And he actually got a pretty good efficiency book trade there as well. So yeah, that is a working trading hall that accommodates the new workstation mechanics. And to my testing at least, it hasn't failed yet. So I'm very, very excited. And this is probably what I'll be building on the Hermitcraft server. Feels like most of you people were very excited about hearing what the red button does. 
So I'll just show you. Press the red button. And the villager gets killed in lava, so we don't lose any reputation or anything like that. And the minecart gets selected or gets collected in a hopper below. So you can recycle it into that dispenser if you want to. This is basically very similar to the garden machine or the selector machine that I have on the Hermitcraft server. To build this machine here, you just need a input rail. And the, this is the classic design I go with, where I have a, a dispenser that shoots out a minecart. I have a detector rail that when on the way back, it makes sure that the rail switches and get sent to the place I want it and that's how you do that right there super super simple you may have to invert the signal based on the uh, direction the rails are facing because rails are a little bit awkward like that and then the uh, god machine the selector buttons the green button doesn't actually uh, do anything other than power the rail because the rail is by default facing the village breeder the red button just does the same thing powers the rail and powers this rail here to switch it and yeah, I wired that up right below here. This is actually the light, the daylight sensor, but I wired the rest of it up here. So as you can see, that, that torch there powers the, powers the rail and then the signal goes over this way and powers this rail over here if I press the red button, as you can see right over there. So very, very simple, but also very useful. To be honest, I don't really know how useful the red button in the god machine will be in 114, but <laughs> it may it may very well be useful and it's something that I've always done, so I'm just gonna go ahead and keep it. But I don't really see a reason for not keeping a villager when you're able to trade and set the profession. I guess if you want to get the perfect, perfect villager where you're gonna trade all of the book trades or unlock all the book trades with a librarian before you put them in your trading cell, then it's probably a good thing to have. Now, as you can see, the last thing here is that I have quite a distance between my selector and the trading hall. And this is actually not a calculated uh, distance at all. It just happened that I built this over there. I believe that you can build this within like five blocks of your trading hall. Just make sure that these villagers in here always have their workstation in front of them. That you don't have any empty villagers in here without a profession because then it's going to mess up. And that's basically the whole idea of 114. You got to set their profession before you send them to the trading hall and that's 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 just gonna save you a lot of headache but anyway that's all that i have for you today so i hope that you've learned something i hope that you find this useful and can use this in your world i am a complete noob when it comes to tutorials so do give me some comments and suggestions down below i don't do these very often and also of course if you like the video make sure to hit the like button if you're brand new consider subscribing and i will see you dudes in the next episode